Right, I've hit the go live button, so hopefully we are live. If you are watching this live, uh, please let me know if you can hear me and you can see me okay. And welcome to an afternoon of Mystic Veil Digital. Now, are we going to get sound? We are going to get sound. Let me know if you can hear the computer game as well. Uh, I just need to get my chat working on another screen. Christian's here, he absolutely loves the game. Dennis is here. Joe's here, Frodo's here. So yeah, let me know if you can hear and see me. Let me know if you can hear the computer game, although there's not much sound coming from the computer game at the moment. Um, Linda's here as well. So audio and video is good. Right, so I've done this, I've covered this game a couple of times before on the channel. Really, really enjoy the game. Uh, the last time I played, I didn't have any of the expansion packs. Now, thankfully, uh, Nomad Games uh, has sent me uh, the expansion sets for me to cover on the channel, which I'm really keen to play. I'm really keen to see what they do. Uh, and if we look in the... is it in the game settings? No, it's not in the game settings. Where is it? It's probably... I, I probably just click play. Oh, if we look in my collection, here we go. So my collection, you can see I've got Mystic Veil, the base game, I've got Veil of Magic, Veil of the Wild, and Mana Storm. Now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to play for about an hour and a half or so. I have an unboxing video happening at 5 o'clock UK time, where I am going to be unboxing Messina 1347. So I've basically got a bit of time before then. And I'm just looking around my studio to see if I've got a clock. I don't have a clock in here. And I don't wear a, phone. I don't wear a watch. Uh, and my phone is completely out of battery. So I will occasionally have to um, <laughs> alt tab to see what time it is. It's 20 past three at the moment. Uh, and I'm basically, yeah, going to play probably until about 15 minutes before I'm due to start the unboxing video. James says it's your fiance's favorite game. Plays with the longer game option. Yeah, the longer game option is interesting because I find sometimes with this game, you don't really get going. And the longer game option does give you that, that benefit. Anyway, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to play a few games of it. Uh, and I'm also going to be doing a giveaway. So Nomad Games have sent me some Steam keys for the game. And what I'm going to do is maybe tonight, I think I'm going to pick uh, at random one of my existing Patreon supporters and send you a Steam key. So if you are a Patreon supporter of mine, obviously your support makes the channel possible. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for supporting me. And yeah, I'm going to basically do a, a completely random draw tonight and somebody's going to win a copy of the game. Um, if you do like the content that I create and you are not a Patreon supporter of mine, please consider supporting me at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Uh, right, let's jump in. Let's see how we go on. Yeah, so a Mystic Veil Solo with the Nemesis expansion. So I don't physically I only own the base game um, I don't I, I mean I, yeah I could write I mean I'm friends with John D. Clare I could ask him I could get him to pull a few strings but yeah I only have the base game in physical form so what we're going to do right now the first game is going to be uh, classic I think this is right but I'm going to include the Veil of Magic expansion Okay, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to probably, hopefully, play three games, one with each of the expansions, and then if I've got time, I might mix them all in. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Jonathan's here as well. Yeah, the digital version is very good. Let's play a game sometime, Jonathan, because there is um, uh, there is multiplayer option. Now, last time we played, if for those people who were, who were watching last time, I played against them on the hard difficulty, and I didn't stand a chance. I, I got absolutely... Right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play again. I'm going to play against them on the hard difficulty level and we'll see how we do. We'll see if I get better at this game or if I don't because I'm clearly not very good at the game. If you are watching this live and you have any tips for me or if you're watching this back afterwards and you think, Paul, you're playing it all wrong. Strategy-wise, you need to be doing this. Please let me know because I want to get better at this game um, but I'm just not very good at it. So we're going to play against the Beast Brothers Red, Life Wardens Green, both of them set to hard, and I probably will not win this game. Because um, I haven't managed to beat it before. Okay, so, now, my first question is, how do I know which set a card is from? And I don't think you can. I don't think there's any kind of identifier on the card to tell me which set it's from. You just have to kind of... I mean, you don't need to know for a start. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I'm just curious. Um, I think if you click on, yeah, I think it was in another thing. I could have looked in my collection, um, and I, it would have actually told me which which cards come with which uh, particular set. 
Right, we're going to give it a go. There's 28 victory points in the pool. And this is not going to be a tutorial. If you don't know how to play the game, this is not going to be... I have done a video on teaching this game. This is just going to be a playthrough. Um, okay, so it's my go, and I'm going first in the round sequence. I have two mana. I think it's called mana. Yeah, there's no symbols in the physical game either, which is a shame. I'm a big, big fan of when publishers put uh, an icon on the card to show that it's from an expansion set so that you can easily remove it. You know, when you're teaching somebody a game for the first time and you want to remove the expansions, it should have icons on. There's no reason not to, in my opinion. Uh, so we've got two. What do we want to do? Do we want to push on and try and get three? I think the sentries from the expansion. I don't remember that. I think we're going to push on. Which is the push on card? Is that that one? Yeah. Push on deck card to field. Okay, we've spoiled. That's fine. It means we get the... Um, Plus one mana next turn. Okay, so yeah, there you go. That's what the green did and red spoiled as well. Back to me. And that's why it's so quick to play digitally. So I've got four mana and I think that includes... Yeah, that four mana includes this mana token here. Stephen's here. Hi, Stephen. Thank you for popping in. So um, I don't want to push on. I, I want to go to the harvest phase. And we're going to spend four. So what could we buy? We could buy up to this we could buy two fertile souls and that's my first question tactically should i be buying uh two fertile souls at this point or should i be buying a hatchery now i just noticed the pings gone off in the background so just so you don't get bothered by background pings i thought i'd closed everything down in the background but i have so many windows open right now i've obviously got one window open in the background which is pinging at me so just bear with a minute while i close down all of my background windows uh, and that will also allow you to answer my question of well, should I buy yeah so should I buy two fertile souls so Christian's saying two fertile souls get your economy going rather than see I'm just thinking of other deck building games like Dominion it's always better to buy the single biggest more expensive card but this is slightly different um, okay so we're gonna go with that we're gonna go with what Christian says Rick also says two fertile soils and two on the same card that's my next next thing i'm going to put two on the same card i'm going to put that one and you just drag it down don't you and i'm going to put that one so we have an we have an uber card okay there you go okay what would you do would you put both on the same card or would you split them over different cards lots of little tactical tips two separate cards oh well too late now i've got an uber card the problem with the Uber card is um, you kind of put all your eggs in one basket for it. But I'm going to go with that and see what happens. So I've got four mana again. Why have I got four mana? One, two, three, four. So we're going to do the same thing. If, if that is the advice, then I'm going to do the same thing. I've now got two Uber cards. Maybe that's where I was going wrong before. I was buying the bigger, prettier cards uh, and not focusing on building up my economy. Right, we only have two mana this time, so I think I'm going to push on and see what we get. Oh, we got three. So I think at this point I might stop. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop with three, and we're going to buy this Limb Thresher. So this is going to give me a mana, and it's also going to give me a green icon. Now that, I think, is from the expansion, because green is needed by three of these. So I'm going to drag this down, we're going to put it on the left. Okay, done, end turn. Two spoil cards, two soil cards can be very useful. I don't like that. I don't like having two spoil on a card because then it reveals and suddenly bang, you've lost it. We have five mana. Oh, because we got my Uber card or one of my Uber cards. Right, so we got five. So at this point, do we buy a five? There isn't a five. So we could buy a three and a two. We could buy the sentry, or we could buy the wellspring. That's got some nice icons on it. The moon wolf is quite nice. It's kind of wasting one, but you know. Um, the sentry is double guardian icons, but we don't have anything that triggers off guardian icons at the moment. Hmm. So I'm sort of tempted by the wellspring, sort of. 
but the moon wolf is good for economy. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm, not, I'm going to buy neither of those. Uh, I'm going to buy the sentry. Well, first of all, let, do we want to stop at five? We do want to stop at five. So I am going to buy the sentry and I'm going to put it on a blank card. Oh, it's in the top. Yeah, it's in the top part of the card. So I'm going to put that on a blank card and we'll see if we manage to get any other guardian icons and things that trigger off guardian icons there. Uh, and then I'm going to put a fertile sword. Now, how many is available of each? It says seven. But I don't know how many is available for each of the three different types of fertile soil. Uh, so I'm just going to take uh, a top one and put it there. Okay. Uh, Naruga's here from Tokyo. Good. Well, it's good afternoon here. What time will that make it over there? Very early in the morning? But thank you for joining in. You're curious about the game. The digital adaptation is very good. Plays very smoothly. It's very quick. Yeah, really, really good digital implementation. Um, so, we only have two mana. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm not at any... I'm not going to lose anything if I spoil, so I'm going to push on. We have three. Now, I do quite like Cleansing Rain. When played, search your deck for any card. You may put it into your discard pile. Your deck will then be shuffled. Basically, you, you get rid of a card from your deck that you don't want. So it doesn't give anything itself, but what it does do is take one of the bad cards out and puts it into the discard pile. So I do quite like that. Um, okay, let's take it. Yeah, let's, let's go with that. Let's go with three mana. Unless I want to push on and try and get four. And I don't like push your luck as a mechanism. It's one of my least favourite mechanisms in the game. But in this game, it's okay because... Um, it's a relatively short game, so I don't I don't kind of mind it too much. Is it a new shirt? It's not a new shirt. It's a very, very old shirt, actually. I just... All of my um, plaid ones are in need of iron at the moment. <laughs> and I decided not to iron one and just wear another shirt instead. This is one of my old work shirts from years ago. So anyway, Cleansing Rain. I think I'm going to buy it, and I think I'm just going to put it on this card here. Okay. Right, next. Look at that! Boom, boom, boom! I've got nine mana next time. Well, I am definitely not pushing on here. So, nine. Wow! You don't normally get nine at this stage in the game, but my two uber cards came out. So let's have a look at the nines. Oh, look at these. Grove Guardian, two points, one mana and a, a green symbol, and it's got a guardian icon on. Ent Elder. Two points at the end of the game, one mana, three icons. It looks a little bit scary. Looks quite scary. Yeah, if I met him in a forest at night, I'd be a little bit scared. Or the Woodland Warden. Getting two points for each. Aha! Now, that's a great card if I can put it on my card with the Guardian icons, which is not there. So I'm going to save the Woodland Warden. I think we're going to go with the Grove Guardian. Because I do like these green icons here. These green icons here will cancel out spoilage icons, which is on here, for example. So I could put that on here, and that is effectively a... They, they've been cancelled out. So yeah, I like that. There's my nine, nine cost card. Christian saying get the end. I can't get the end, it's scary. Right. The only downside is the AI goes really quick, so you can't really see what it's done. Not that you really need to. It's very much a multiplayer solitaire game, which uh, I have no problems with. Are we worried about pushing on and losing anything? I don't think we are, because we only have two mana. So we'll push on. Uh, now we've got four mana, and we've got a green icon, but the green icon on its own is not enough to buy one of those cards. It's four. If we take the Wellspring, I can put these icons onto the same card with those icons. Yeah, sorry, they don't cancel out. No, that's a separate icon. So I could do that. That would mean I've got two green and a brown on the same icon, which is kind of what you want to do for these. But actually, there's nothing that... Uh... Yeah, okay, I think I might do that. 
Again, let me know in the chat if you think I shouldn't. The other option is the Wayfinder. Oh, I might go for the Wayfinder instead. So I'm going to put the Wayfinder on here. So when this card comes out, I get a green and a brown icon, which is enough to buy the World Tree. Okay, done. All spent. All spent. Next. Nobody scored any actual points yet. So that's how it goes at the start of the game. By the way, we still got a Loki. Oh, we do have a Loki. <laughs> so on the other side of my table, uh, I've got another chair, and Loki is asleep on that chair. And I just said his name, and he, he just got up and he looked around with his head. <laughs> yeah, he looked around with his head. He didn't look around with his feet, because that's not how cats work. Um, the Wellspring would have been good, because it allows you to get the top most top row cards by itself. Yes. Okay, right. Where are we up to? We've got three mana. We've got no symbols. That's the card on top of the deck. I think we'll play it. I think we'll push on. So I'm playing Cleansing Rain. It Basically, I'm searching my deck for any card, which, well, I've only got two cards on my deck. So I'll discard that one. Um, do we want to push on anymore? We've got four mana. So again, we could go for we could go for the wellspring. Hmm. I don't know at this point. I kind of do want these icons. You do need these icons. So I think I think we'll stop there. We will buy one of the wellsprings, or do we buy a druid song? Because that's got one generic wild card icon. Now I think we'll go for this. And where are we going to put it? Let's put it on this card. And it's all of these little micro decisions that you make in the game. Which card to buy, where to put it. Um, yeah, which I'm not, I'm not good at. Christian's saying go for the spring. I should put it in a cat chair can. <laughs> James has got to go back to work. Right, we have seven mana. Seven mana. What are we going to do with seven mana? Are we going to push? I don't, I don't want to push on at seven. Because if I spoil, that's seven mana wasted. What are, what cards have we got to slot things into? Oh, we don't. We could play the Mindful Owl. Yeah, let's do that. Do like the Mindful Owl. So I'm going to bring, bring the Mindful Owl because it's two mana, but when you play it, you can discard any other card in your field. Get one of the spoilage cards. So that's going to go on there. And let me know, by the way, if the sound of the computer game is too loud or too quiet because I can easily I can easily turn it up Peter's in the chat hi Peter yep yeah, bonus stream I finished putting my socks away and I can't do any rule book work this afternoon <laughs> because yeah the four projects that I'm working on suddenly I've reached a point where I'm like okay oh, I'm waiting for somebody else on all of them so I thought I'll take an hour off and do a bonus stream uh, and this uh, you know as you saw from my monthly video log I'm getting frustrated by not playing enough games um, or having games that I've been sent that I want to cover on the channel. So we are discarding a card from my deck and it doesn't really matter which one of these it is. It'll be that one. And then that gets... Oh, look at this. Okay, so... How are they doing for points? So we're all, we're all doing roughly the same for points. Nobody's got any actual points. We've just got end game points. Um, the sound is okay. Great. It's fine. So yeah, we've got seven mana and we've got two green icons and two brown icons. Somebody remind me what those icons are called. I can't remember. But that means I can buy the Stream of Vigor. Yeah, I can't quite buy the Conclave event. So we're definitely not pushing on. We are going to go to the Harvest phase and I am going to buy the Stream of Vigor. So basically, once I've got the Stream of Vigor, every Harvest phase I get two additional mana. And I can buy a third card. So we've got to do that. We've got to buy that. There you go. Um, right. What are we going to do with the seven mana? Why is it not lending me spend... Why is it not letting me spend the seven mana? Should I have bought my actual card first? Yeah, I don't know why it's not letting me spend the seven mana. What have I missed? I'm buying that. I don't want to end turn. I have seven mana. 
I'm confused. Why is it not letting me buy a card? Have I missed something? I have no open slots. I have no open slots. That's a very, very good point. I only have three cards in my field and every single one is full. Well spotted, Thomas. So I can't buy anything. Well, there we go. It was a good round, but actually I can't buy any cards. Right. Now I have some open slots, but I only have four mana. Am I going to stick with four? That's a new card. I don't recognise this one. Am I going to stick with four? Or am I going to push on? I think we're going to push on. Where's my three spoil symbols? Oh yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, we're going to push on. Okay. We've got five mana. I think we're going to... I think we're going to spend the five mana to buy the Feral Chieftain because... I gain a point for every helmet icon, every guardian icon on this card. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy that and put it on there. So when that card gets played, I'm going to get three points for it because of the guardian icons. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was the biggest improvement with the first expansion is that the guardian icons in the base game were not that great. They were a bit underused. And the first expansion fixed to that and rebalanced the guardian icons. Um... Okay, we're done. So, two points have gone out of the pool. Finally. Uh, what am I discarding? I'm discarding that one. Oh, look at that. I've got 12 mana. Yeah, increasing the economy early was definitely the right, the right thing. So, thank you for that advice. Right, so we have 12 mana. We have one green icon and one brown icon. Has anybody told me what they're called? <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. Um... So we could buy the World Tree, which is very simply worth one point. It's got no special abilities, but it is worth a point. I mean, I'm getting two mana every single time because of that. Um, yeah, this is nice now. So, yeah, we're not going to push on. Get the World Tree. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got no other choice, so I, I will be buying the World Tree, which is basically a two-point card. And then we've got 12 mana, so let's have a look at the big ones. Now, do we want to buy a Woodland Warden? I don't think we do. So we could buy the Ent Elder, even though it's quite scary, because look at those juicy icons there. Or we could buy the Leyline Overflow, but this has got a spoil icon on. I, I don't like taking cards with spoil icons, but they are powerful. Very powerful. That actually looks like uh, Minus Morgul as well. Looks very much like Minus Morgul. Grove Tender. Uh, it has one green icon for every Guardian icon on the card. So that's awesome. If I put it on a card with Guardian icons on, which is that one. So if I put that on there... That would actually be... That would actually be a, a net positive card. So we could do that. We could absolutely do that. Oh, I'm not sure. And remember, I can buy up to three cards. If I wanted to. So, yeah, I think... Ooh. Oh, I'm not sure now. I mean, also, how far are we through the game? We've only started taking points out of the pool just recently. Yeah, Grove Tender would be amazing, but kept for higher value guardian cards. Yeah, exactly. If I put it on there, it's only one green icon. So I think... Yeah, I think we're going to save it. I think we just might buy three four-point cards. Because I'm still scared by the end. So let's buy the Wellspring and put it on there. Uh, let's buy the Hawk and put it on there. And let's buy... Yeah, you kind of don't want to fill your cards, do you? Because of the, um, the situation that I was in earlier on where I couldn't play a card. We'll put Moonwolf on. There you go. 
Normally you can only buy two cards, but because I've got this in play, the Stream of Vigor, I can buy three cards. So we're discarding a card from the deck, doesn't matter. One of the bad ones. That's been quite useful, that, I think. Right. And the game does escalate, so these points, they didn't disappear for ages, but they're going to start disappearing now quite a bit. Currently, I think I'm, I'm winning with 10 points. Net 10 points. I don't know if that's 2 plus 10 or 10 in total. 7 mana, a green and a brown. Anything I can buy for a green and a brown? No. But if I push on, I'll lose the 7. Oh, Mr. Plough's out. We like Mr. Plough. Bear Totem is nice because it's got a green icon on it. And we love the green icons. I think I might just plant and buy the Bear Totem. Put it on there so that neutralises that card as well. Again, lots of different strategies in this game. You could go for cancelling out your spoil icons so that you end up drawing more cards without spoiling, or you could go really focused um, and don't mind the spoiling now and again. I've already, I thought I'd already done this. I'm doing it again. Oh, that was, that was getting rid of a card from in play. Yeah, this is getting a card from my deck. There you go. 14 mana. Right, I'm going to have an awesome turn next. Two icons is one victory point. Mm, not sure what you mean there, Thomas. I'm not sure what you mean. So, this is going to be a big turn. I've got 14 mana, I've got two green, one yellow, two brown symbols, and cards that are going to get me five points. So I'm definitely not pushing on. I'm going to the harvest phase. So yeah, I've just gained five points. And Oh, look at this! It's all available to me. What do we want? Do we want the Ancient Life Roots? Do we want the Pool of Light? Can I buy more than one? In fact, how... Oh, I can't buy the Ancient Life Roots. No, I can't buy all of them. Conclave Events. That's pretty good, isn't it? Adding a Guardian Icon to a card. Actually, I quite like the Stream of Vigor again, but it's not worth any points. Hmm. And I do like the Blooming Arbors. Blooming Arbor. Ugh. Once per turn... Oh, th this is what Roof does. On once per turn you can spend two mana to gain a point. Yeah, Conclave would be good for the Grove Tender. Yeah. Yeah, don't have the Grove Tender though yet. But I could buy the Grove Tender this turn. Can I put it on a card with any Guardian icons? Ah, it's a pity. That would be there. That's why I'm getting the points for that one. Have we got any Guardian icons in the middle? No, there's nothing with a Guardian Icon in the middle. Oh, yeah, there is. The Ent Elder. So the Ent Elder could go there. I think that's totally happening. We are going to we are gonna buy the Ent Elder. So I need, I need this card to come out now more often, because every time it comes out, I get a bazillion points. Um, are we going to buy Mr. Plow? We've got five mana left. Or are we going to buy the Water Weaver? Yeah, there's lots of Guardian Icons here. I think I'm going to buy... Hmm. I think I need to buy cards with points. And green. Green is good. Let's buy Mr. Plan. Okay, so which of these cards do I want to buy? Um... Yeah, if they're not worth any points though, these big ones. I might buy the Ether Tree. Ah, now if I buy the Ether Tree, that's a green and a yellow. That means all I have left is a green and a brown, which is not enough to buy any of the other ones. So I think I might buy the Conclave Events. Select Spirit Token. That's what the icons are called. Select the Spirit Token that will be used for the. Oh, I don't... No, no, the Spirit Token is the... Yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? That's just the wild one. Right, I think we're done. That was a big turn, that. Let's have a look at the chat. Yeah, Grove Tender and the Woodland Warden on the Moon Wolf would have been awesome. Yeah, Rick saying Under the Wolf as well. I'm clearly not that good, but... Thank you for the tips. I just have to look over there and it's in really tiny lettering. Okay, five points left in the pool. We are nearing the end of the game. I think I'm doing alright for points. 
Do I want to stop here? I'm going to generate two points and four mana if I do, but I'm not going to be able to buy any cards. This is a critical point here. I could just bank the two points and say done, but this might be then my last turn of the game. If the other players, and you can see what's in their things, the, the red player, the Beast Brothers, they're going to generate seven points on their turn. Which is going to end it. Because the pool will run out and I will have already had my turn. And I don't think you play another round. So I think we're just going to stick stick here. Uh, I can't really buy anything. Nope. And I generate the two points. Okay. And then the green player comes along and does stuff. And then the red player comes along, generates the seven points. And that triggers the end of the game, I think. Or, yeah, so that's the end of the game done. So you just play till the end of that round. I think I did a lot better. Now, I say I think I did a lot better. I didn't come last. So Beast Brothers scored 34. Paul Grogan scores 23. Not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, so sorry for not following all of the tips in the chat. As I say, it's over there on a different screen and I have to keep looking at it. So Thomas is saying three unspent symbols is one point if you can't use it. I thought that as well, but then I couldn't remember how you actually did that in the, in the game. So, yeah. Right, anyway, we're done with the first game. So that's first game today. How are we doing for time? It's 10 to 4, so I can definitely get another game in. Let's play again. Well, first of all, let's look at my collection and let's look at Veil of the Wild. So this is where you can look at the cards that are in that set. But as you say, no, no identifying features on them to say where they are from. But we're going to play a game with them. So let's close that. Let's do play. Let's say classic. And this time I'm going to turn off Veil of Magic. And I'm going to turn on Veil of the Wild. Just for a bit of variety. You can have them all on if you want to. Um, and we also have leaders. Now I have played the physical game once with leaders. I don't remember how these work. So I might need a little bit of help from the chat. Um, but let's go for it again. What's also interesting is that even though both of them were set to difficulty hard. One of them... And this was exactly the same last time I played. One of them did a lot better than the other one. So I don't quite know how the AI works in this game. Right. So I'm going to select a leader. And there's an upgraded side, apparently. I don't know how you upgrade them. Presumably by spending the mana that it says in the top right. So I've got Cyrilla, the, prote the protector. One mana, bottom, choose one card in your field or on deck. That card gains a guardian icon until the end of the turn. Or Guldun the Warrior. Let's have that one. That's also worth only three points, whereas this one's worth six points. Okay, so we're going to choose Guldun the Warrior. And, and that is presumably just slotted into a card at the start of the game. So I've got five mana right at the start. But, I need to build up my economy. So don't look at the pretty cards, Paul. Just buy the ones that increase my economy. Which will be Field of Flowers. Awesome card. And I think I'm going to do something different. I'm going to split my cards up this time. So I'm going to put Field of Flowers there. And I'm going to put a bottom, fertile, a bottom fertile soil there. Done. Uh, no pre-construction of decks except choosing expansions. Absolutely right. This is this is one of those games where every player starts with exactly the same deck. So in physical form, it is 20 cards. Uh, well, it's 20 card sleeves. And out of those 20 cards, uh, I think seven of them are bad. Or se seven of them are these ones with the Cursed Land. Uh, loads of them are blank. And some of them have this on. Fertile Soil, I think. Anyway. Um, and yeah, you, you are just making your cards better as the game goes on. But yeah, there's no... There's, you can play this game, there is no... Uh, no deck construction before you start the game. 
So we've got three mana. I think I'm going to push on. There's nothing I really want for three. So we've got four mana. So we could go for the sneaky early wellspring. But if I'm going to be building up my economy, I need to buy some fertile soils. So we will buy a fertile soil there and a fertile soil there. Done. Yeah, it's interesting because it, it's the opposite of what you do in most deck building games. In, in most deck building games, you would not buy two cheap cards. You would always buy one expensive card. But that's because two cheap cards are taking up two slots in your deck. Whereas in this game, your deck is 20 cards. Your deck is always 20 cards. It never changes. It's just uh, what makes up the cards in the deck that changes. But yeah, you've always got the same number of cards. So we have three mana, nothing special. I'm going to push on. Four mana. Hmm. Shall we just buy... Oh no, I've spoiled. Yeah, I don't have four mana, I've spoiled. Never mind. Right, now my leaders come out next time. So this is actually a good time. So I've got two mana from that, three, four, and the mana token, so I've got five. The Hulking Thornhide. So this is a card that's got... It's a powerful card. It's three points every time you play it, but it does have the spoil icon on it. Um, and we've got Mr. Plough. Good old Mr. Plough. What do I do? Do I buy a three and a two? We don't have any twos. Oh, look at this. This is a new card. Bonecaster. Two mana, but it's got a spoil icon on it and a wild spirit. Now, I can't upgrade that. I need eight mana to upgrade that. I think we're going to get Mr. Plough. So yeah, we're not going to push on. We are going to go to the harvest phase. We're going to buy Mr. Plow and put it there. Okay. There's this one. One green spirit icon for each guardian on the card. Okay. Six mana. We're not going to push on at six, are we? No, we're not. What are we going to buy? Beast Brother Champion. What does that do? Don't know what this does. I don't know what these do at the bottom do. Maybe this is a permanent thing. Maybe it's always got these. But yeah, I don't know what that does. Uh, we've no tooltips, unfortunately, for this game. So I can't see what it does. Maybe I'll buy it. And then we'll see what it does. <laughs> so what have we got? We've got six mana. So yeah, let's buy this. Let's put it on its own. And let's buy a... Should we buy the bone caster? It's a little bit risky. But yeah, let's buy the bone caster. Let's put it on this card. No, it's got a guardian icon on. We'll put it on this card. Okay, can't buy any of those cards. We're done. Is there a manual in the menu? Yes, it probably is. Yeah, probably is. But I don't know whether I can get there now. No. Ah, that's where you see how many of what different types of cards are available. Oh, and that's how many's in the deck. Right, got it. Uh, what are we on? We're on five mana. Do we want to keep five mana or do we want to push on? Five's quite nice. While on deck, you cannot spoil. So that's a new card as well. And we've got the Hulking Thornhide. Now I think I'm going to buy the Hulking Thornhide because it's three points every time you play it. And at this stage in the game, quite early still, I think we might go for it. I'm going to put it on there. Okay. And we're done. Find some Veil cards. Right, next round for me. I've got two mana and no symbol, so I'm pushing on. Got four mana. Oh, look at that. Check that out. Interesting. That's a new card. Well, we got the Cleansing Rain. We liked that last time. 
but I'm tempted to get the wellspring. Or do we just buy some more fertile soils? I think more fertile soils at this point. Uh, let's put one on the bottom and one in the middle. Okay, so hopefully we've bought enough fertile soils now. So yes, do we know what this card does? Uh, can you put it over a middle section? It doesn't take up its slot. <sighs> yeah, not sure. Don't know what this does. So mana, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, so this must mean it's permanently got that. It's added that to the card, no matter which slot it's in. Just don't know what that icon there means. Uh, are we bothered about any of this? Do we want to push on? It's four mana. It's not really that much, is it? Let's push on. Because look what's coming. Could be good. Yes, we haven't spoiled. So we'll harvest. Right, I've got six mana. Uh, what are we going to do with six mana? See, the life bringer seed is awesome if you put it on a card with lots of spoilage. Um, like the Sundered Land, for example. Call of the Hunt, what does this do? Harvest. Place cards from the top of your deck at the end of your field until there are eight cards in your field. Okay. Okay, interesting. Uh, so Alan is saying it can be covered by another card. The bonus at the bottom remains. Ah, oh, right, okay. So it's not, a, it's not, the icon isn't two cards. The icon means you can cover it with something else. Got it. So I... I Ah, but if I put that over it, I lose the bottom ability as well, surely. Because <laughs> that would cover over the bottom ability of the card. Um, what have we got? Six mana. Is Call of the Hunt good? I don't know, it might be. I think, I think I'm just going to keep it simple, though. Um, I mean, if I can get that life bring a seed out... That would be quite nice. Oh, I think Loki's snoring. Tricky. Right, I'm going to buy... I'm going to buy Wellspring. And I'm going to buy a Fertile Soil here. I don't know whether that's the right answer. Okay, now points-wise, I'm not doing very well this time. Well, I'm doing better than red. Green's doing well this time. So we've got seven mana. No fancy shenanigans special abilities, but seven mana is seven mana. I don't really want to push on and lose that, so we'll plant with seven. So we could play another Beast Brother Champion. We've got the Lifebringer Seed, which we could put here. That would cancel that, but you really want to do the Lifebringer Seed when you've got multiple nasty things on a card. Um, like the Bonecaster, for example. What have we got? We've got seven. So we could do it. Right, I am going to bring the Lifebringer Seed there and the Bonecaster there. So that card is now awesome because it has no red icons on it. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Done. Next. Beast Brothers keep spoiling, I think. Yeah, Life Wardens is doing well at this. The game does have uh, the normal problem that deck building games do in that they uh, they escalate. Now that isn't a problem in itself, but when one player gets a good start and gets some really good stuff at the start, then they will just get better and better. They're, they're basically, they if you think of it like an exponential curve, if, if things fall right for you and you get lucky with your card draws or whatever, you can get ahead of that curve early on and then it's... It's harder for everybody else to catch up. But as I say, it's a fairly short game, so I don't mind that. If it was like a two, three hour game, then I'd have a problem with that. I didn't want to do that, did I? I clicked a button there and didn't mean to. Oops. <laughs> uh, right, in which case, let's just buy that. Too busy chatting to the camera. Okay. Jonathan's been playing the digital version of Gaia Project today.
I need to play Gaia Project as well. I've only played, embarrassingly enough, I've only ever played Gaia Project once in my life and I don't own a copy. Um, although Clay from Capstone Games a couple of years ago said I need to get you a copy of Gaia Project and he still hasn't, so... Right, six mana. Uh, we still haven't got enough to upgrade this card. So, do we want to push on? Hmm. I don't really want to push on and lose six at this stage in the game, because I am... Well, I, if you look at the points, green green has got this. Green has easily got this. Uh, and red's not... Well, red's doing okay. But if I push on, this might go very bad. But I'm going to risk it. I'm going to push on. Spoiled. Ah! Didn't work. That's a shame. That was my chance. That was my chance. Okay. Now the Life Wardens is going to get even further ahead. So, now we need to make sure I don't come last. <laughs> so I've got seven mana. Uh, have I got anything I want to do with the seven mana? Yeah, I think we're going to buy... Mindful Owl. I think it's going to go there. Okay, done. Oh, and I didn't use the mana token. Right, yes, if you don't use it, you keep it. Ah, now at this point, I can upgrade my, my leader. So, let's do that. Whether that's the right thing to do or not, I don't know. But, I can do it, and I've never used leaders before. So, here we go. Activate. Cancel. What do I click on? I don't know what I click on. Upgrade. There you go. You may duplicate one other card in your field. The duplicate will be dismissed during the discard phase. So can I do that now? I don't know. Um, in the harvest phase, you may duplicate... Yeah, I mean, it's shaded out, so presumably I can't use it this turn. Let's take the Azure Lake. Let's purchase that. Okay, done. I'm sort of equal-ish with red on points. Well, I was. Now look at the situation. Red has suddenly got 23 points in total. Green's got 25. I'm on 14. Totally losing this game. Game's almost over. Game is almost over. So we're going to have to push on. We're going to have to push on even again. Right. We'll stick with that. So I can buy one card... <laughs> so let's buy one card. And I've got 11 mana to spend. Anything going to get me points? Um, I mean, this is worth two points. So let's take it. Let's put it there. Oh, still purchasable cards. Oh, I've got two mana left. Yeah, of course. I'll buy that. Put it there. Okay. Don't know if I'll get another turn. I should get another turn. Red's not going to score eight points. Yeah, I've totally come last on this one. Now, why did that just make that no? That what happened there? I thought we had another turn. I'm very confused there. I thought there was eight left. Maybe it ran out and then it was starting to count down. I don't know. Anybody knows in the chat why the game ended there. But anyway, I, I, as expected, I lost quite badly. So the Beast Brothers sneaked in. Wasn't doing very well at the start. Life Wardens had a brilliant start, but then kind of failed around the middle. And then me at the end. And I can see why people play the long version of the game. Because we didn't really buy any Veil cards. I didn't buy any Veil cards... Well, it says zero, but I actually had two of them. I got... Yeah, why is it saying zero? I don't understand what that zero there is. Because I had two Veil cards. And there's my deck at the end of the game. So why did it end? People are talking about other computer games in the chat, and I don't know why. Anyway, game two. I'm still enjoying it. It's still a good game to play, but as you see, I'm, I'm clearly not very good at it. Okay, it's ten past four. We've got time for a third game. We can do it. So let's go into play again. Let's go to classic. And this time we're going to take off 
Veil of the Wild, and we're going to put Mana Storm on. Now I'm going to put Mana Storm on. We've got Leaders and Amulets. I'm going to take... No, go on, let's, let's include them. I don't know what Amulets are, so this is, this is a new thing again. <laughs> let's try again. Okay, select Amulet. I can either have the Dark Soul Ember. In the planting phase, you must push at least once. I don't like that. That that's going to make me feel really uncomfortable. Spoil minus two. Evoke harvest. Choose one advancement you bought this turn. You may use that advancement this turn. I don't know. I'm going to choose a summoner stone. So I think this means when you spoil, you flip it over. I, I don't know. I'm guessing. And when you harvest, you flip it over. Okay, let's let's go with that one. We'll see what happens. Leaders, which leader do I want? Do I want the one with no points, with no special ability that cost eight to flip? Or do I want the one that is worth six points? I mean, presumably the upgraded side of that is amazing, which it is. Gain one additional mana for each blank card in your field. Okay, so we're gonna go with Morlock, the Mana Weaver. And we need blank cards. Okay. Amulets are flipped when you spoil. Right, got it. So, tis my turn. I have five mana. We are going to keep the five mana. We're not going to push on. And we're going to buy the Mist Sliffs. Ah, so we've now got cards that are worth negative points. So cards that are really good, but that are actually worth negative points. That's fine. I'm all about the negative points. So I'm going to buy that. Um, in fact, we want to load up cards, don't we? Because we want blank cards. I should have been looking at these as well. Because I could buy that. Oh, gosh. It's worth two points if you have one to two blank cards. Three if you have three to four. Right, I'm going to buy that. Because my plan is to have lots of blank cards at the end of the game. And it'd be worth 13 points. That is my plan. Okay? Lots of blank cards. I just need to somehow get to 8 mana to flip my leader ability. Oh, Grasslands is quite nice. That's gone. Right, 2 mana. We're going to push on. We've spoiled. Right, now where's my amulet? Is that this? Yeah. Yeah, don't know how I use it. There you go, it's flipped over. Right, and now that it's flipped over, I can use it to evoke place the bottom card of your deck at the end of your field. Okay, well let's, let's push on first. Ah, spoiled again. Ah, that's no good. So does the amulet replace the normal mana token? I guess it does. There we go. We've got some better stuff. Yeah, your mana token has special power. Right, okay. Rene's here. Hi, Rene. Uh, and I hope you don't mind, Rene, but I borrowed your board game geek image for Messina 1347 for the thumbnail. I did credit you on it, so thank you very much for that. Um, okay, so we're going to keep this. We've got four mana. But I'm going to keep the four mana. I don't want to push on and lose it. And I've got this mana token. So I can do this. Place the bottom card of your deck at the end of your field. Let's do it. Okay. So I've now got five mana. And now the token has flipped over. Right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. What do we want to do with the five? Well, we could buy some more mist sliffs. Let's do that. Let's buy some more mist sliffs. Put them there, and then buy some fertile soil and put them there. So we want to keep lots of blank cards in my deck for my end game points. You can see here, my end game points is 13 at the moment because of that one card that I bought. I've just got to stick to it, not not load up cards. Two mana, we're pushing on. Three mana, meh, still pushing on. Spoiled. Which means I get a special power. So actually, with this expansion, with the amulets, 
spoiling is actually less of a problem because you get a special power when you do. Okay, so my go, three mana, and I've got my special power. Which is... Put a card on the thing, yeah. Um, are we bothered about three mana? Hmm. No. Okay, four mana. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to the harvest phase. I am going to use my special power. Okay. Pretty much blank. Never mind. Uh, right, what, we're gonna do, what am I going to do with four mana? So I could put the Night Veil Pathfinder on it. And when I buy it, I get any advancement costing up to six. Which could be the Bear Totem. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's put the Night Veil Pathfinder on there. This purchase cannot be undone. Sure. And let's put the Bear Totem on the bottom. So that cancels out one of those. There you go. Confirm. Oh, and I've still got two. I can buy something else. Let's buy another Fertile Soil and put it on there. So I've only got 12 points now at the end of the game. Not quite sure why. Didn't think I filled a blank card. Okay, so we've still not taken any points from the pool as yet. Oh, I know why. I know why I've lost points. Is because I've taken another minus two card. Rick is asking, does the two points on the amulet mean at the end of the game you haven't used your amulet, you get two points? I guess so. Because if you look at it, uh, then again, it's still got two points on it now. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe the amulet is worth two points either way. So four mana. Uh, what do I want to do? Do I want to push on? To get some more? Yeah, let's push on. Seven mana. That'll do. Not quite eight. What can we buy? The Moss Troll. While on deck, if you spoil, discard this card and gain two points for each thing on it. Ooh. We've got the Lightbringer Seed. Oh, we could cancel some more. Cancel some more nasties. Can't really put that anywhere, though. Night Veil Custodians is quite nice. Again, negative points, but I'm going to take it. I am totally taking it. Yeah, I'm just taking negative point cards. <laughs> but hopefully, these cards are super powerful. Hopefully. The Stroopwafels... The Stroopwafels didn't last very long. Um, the Stroopwafels were amazing, but yes. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't last long. But thank you very much for them. They kept me going one of the nights in Essen when I was in my room uh, late at night after the live stream when I was really hungry. Yeah, so they didn't make it back to the UK. Uh, three mana, a green and a yellow. So green and yellow is not in... Oh, what's this? This is a new one. It's a veil card that actually costs mana to buy. That's different. That is different. So I could buy that. What does it do? It's worth two points. But planting phase. Nah, not bothered about these. Let's, let's skip. Four mana and a green and a yellow. Are we bothered? Is it, is it time to start buying the Wellspring? I mean, look at these. They cost four green spirit icons. Wow. How are we going to get that many green? I think I'm going to push on. Yeah, I'm spoiled. I thought I would. <laughs> Being greedy as ever. Right. Three mana, special token. Nope, still going to push on. And again. Right, okay. Getting nervous now. Six is okay. I think we'll stop at six. So I'm going to go to the harvest phase and I'm going to use my amulet. So we've got seven mana. Right. The Harbinger of Seasons. Look at that. Look at that ugly fella. Four points when you play it, but look at all those bad, bad stuff. Bad, bad stuff on the card. So we're going to buy it. Pop it there. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking a very different approach this game. Point 
Points have now started to be taken from the pool, finally. Planting phase, three mana, nothing else special, we're going to push on. We didn't spoil, we got five mana, we got a green and a yellow. I think we might stop there. And I'm going to buy this. Which cost me a yellow and two. Leaving me with three. And I'm going to buy a fertile soil. Put it there. Oh, look at these cards. Look at these juicy cards. Right, so my go. Uh, I've got seven mana, a green, a brown, and two points. So I'm definitely not pushing. So I can buy the hallowed ground if I want to, but if I do, that's going to cost me two mana. Oh, I don't want to put anything on a card. Oh, I needed eight. Oh, I needed eight to upgrade. Oh, I don't want to fill another card, but I'm going to have to. Well, I mean, I don't have to have to, but... Now, we took the Hulking Thornhide last game, and that didn't really work too well. So I'm thinking the Night Vale Remissary, which is another <laughs> another negative two-point card. So yeah, let's take it. Let's put that on there. Oh, look at that. I lost so many points there. So I did have 12 points at the end of the game. But by taking that, I go down to three. That can't be right. That can't be right at all. Where's the where's the card? Where do I look at my deck? Right, I have nothing in my discard pile. I thought there was a way you could look at your deck. But I, I obviously can't. Unless that's... No, that's a quick reference. That's no good. <laughs> um, well, I don't want to do that then, do I? I don't want to buy a card. Let's just buy the hallowed ground then. Wow. That's a massive points drop if I bought that card. Yeah, I'm going to end my turn. Ouch. Yeah, very different game. Okay, so two mana. Meh. Push. Three mana. Push. Spoiled. Whatever. <laughs> Don't think I'm going to do very well. Although this turn is going to be quite good, I think. So this turn, we have... Come on. Let me have a go. That's it. We have a green, we have two yellow. What can I buy with a green and two yellow? I could buy this, the Heaven Light Portal. All of your green belong to us. Sorry, all of your brown become wild. And it's worth a point. So yeah, let's let's plant. I've got a plant because I'm getting four points. Um, and I could use the amulet as well. Let's use the amulet. Okay, got me an extra one. So I've got seven. So I could bring into play another Harbinger of Seasons. But that's double negatives on a card. Don't like double negatives on a card. Let's let's buy that. What are we going to buy? Oh, it's another one of those. Yeah, so 6 points if you have 5 to 6, and 13 points if you have 7 to 8. So basically there is a big jump here. So I'm going to buy another one of those, and put it on there. That gets me a bazillion more points. Or it should do. Don't know why it's not added those points on. Maybe it has. Okay, done. That's, yeah, that's looking good. Look at those massive endgame. I just need to not... Uh, I need to keep the number of blank cards that I've got. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to push on? Yeah, we'll push on. Um, we've got a wild. Can I do anything with a wild? No. Can I do anything with five mana? Well, I can. And we have Veil cards, so all of my browns are actually wilds. So if I buy 
Yeah, let's, let's go for it. Let's plant. Let's buy a wellspring. I just need to put it there so I don't take up a blank card. Yeah, and I would like 8 mana at some point to upgrade my leader, because my leader is currently useless. I mean, literally, 0 points, no special ability. Um, okay, we push on. We've got 6. If we push on again... Oh, I don't want to push on. I don't want to lose the 4 points. Yeah, I'm just going to take the 6. Um, Grove Tender any good? No. Moon Wolf. Yeah, we can take the Moonwolf, put it there. Uh, and then let's put a Fertile Soil on that one. Okay. Running out of points, this, that might have been the end. I've not managed to upgrade my leader. Yeah, if, if the Beastie Boys can get more than five points... Oh, no, they didn't. It's my turn. Right, okay. Um... Do we want to push? I think at this stage you might as well. Because seven mana isn't really going to... Oh, no, it will. It'll get me that. That'll be two points. Also worth an extra point for each level three advancement. And it is a level three advancement. So I think we're going to stop there. Yeah, we'll stop there. We'll buy the Dawnfire Dragon. It's going to get me quite a few points. And that's it. There you go. So if green and red get three points between them, that is the end. I still don't understand why in the previous game there was eight left and it just went poof and disappeared. Is there another end game condition that I don't know about? Right, come on. Did we do well? We did. We won. There you go. Now, I don't feel that I played particularly better in that game, but... This is it. It's a nice game. I like playing it. However, I have played three games today against the AI on the hardest difficulty level. And unless I suddenly miraculously got a lot better between games two and three, that is quite a big swing. So I think although it's a nice game and I do like it, uh, I think the look factor is quite high. Or the AI is just weird. Um, because I think... As I say, I, I made some decisions and I think I just managed to get lucky with the card draws or whatever and then that caused me to escalate upwards. I don't know, I don't know. That's it. It's a nice game to play. I really enjoy playing it and I would definitely be up for some uh, multiplayer games with Patreon supporters at some point. I think I'm going to stop there. It is almost half four and I don't want to rush because I've got a... I'm almost set up for the unboxing video but I'll take a short break. So yeah, big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters who fund the channel. Um, because of you, videos like this are possible. Uh, and moving on to next year, when I cut down my professional work, um, the Patreon campaign is essentially going to fund pretty much everything that I do. So yeah, big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. And as I mentioned at the start, Nomad Games, who sent me uh, the Steam keys for these expansions, thank you very much to Nomad Games. Um, I have a key for the game to give away. So probably tonight, I will go through all of my Patreon supporters, put them all into a spreadsheet, pick a winner out, and one of you is going to win a digital copy of this game. And if you already own the game, you can you can pass it on to somebody else if you want to. But for now, I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you very much for watching. Join me in about 30 minutes if you are interested in seeing me do an unboxing video for Messina 1347. And if you're not watching this live, then that video will be probably already on the channel. But yeah, for now, take care. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppers LLC.com.